Are you looking for alternative investments and tangible assets that help you build and protect your wealth while empowering your financial future? Look no further than Eckhart Enterprises. With over 37 years of experience in the industry, Eckhart Enterprises is your trusted partner in the world of alternative investments and asset management. They have a track record of success with more than 1,300 investors on board and over 700 million in capital invested in tangible assets. Their specialty lies in offering immediate cash flow opportunities through mineral rights investments so that you don't have to wait decades to see your investments pay off. Their unique AML approach, born from decades of experience, focuses on aggregating, maturing, and liquidating assets strategically to maximize returns. Join Eckert Enterprises. Visit EckertEnterprises.com, spelled E-C-K-A-R-D, Enterprises.com today to begin your journey toward building and protecting your financial future. For more information about alternative investments and asset management, visit EckhartEnterprises.com. And remember, Eckhart Enterprises is your gateway to tangible assets and lasting financial success. Contact Eckhart today. For more information about alternative investments and asset management, visit EckhartEnterprises.com, spelled E-C-K-A-R-D-E-N-T-E-R-P-R-I. S-E-S dot com. And remember, Eckhart Enterprises is your gateway to tangible assets and lasting financial success. Contact Eckhart today. Finally, a source of raw, real, and honest information on healthcare issues that matter most. Welcome to BS Free MD. From the latest medical information to how to stay sane as a doctor or a patient, no subject is taboo. No BS is allowed. Now, let's welcome your hosts, Doctors May and Tim Heinmarsh. Okay, we have the absolute pleasure pleasure of having Doctor John Littell with us. He has been a freedom fighter in the medical freedom movement, to say the least, uh, all the way through the pandemic, uh, and to the point where he is putting on the Florida Summit 2023 for medical freedom, as well as talking about something that is very dear to us, which is how the food supply has been just horrible. And and what we're, I mean, some amazing speakers. But to set the stage, Dr. Littell, you have had, you have had a little bit of a run-in with, with the certification board that uh, we're we're all three of us are board certified in family practice tell us a little bit of the backstory of what happened there yes well you know who knew that having a conference um for continuing medical education could turn out to be such a uh, a unprofessional act and uh you know obviously we've all been labeled as misinformers but you know, I, I thought we had a, a right in our country to bring doctors together to have an open exchange of ideas. And clearly the last two summits on COVID were not what the American Board of Family Medicine thought was uh, an exchange of, of ideas that certainly that they would tolerate. It, it, we, we had the same speakers who were going to come this year, many of them, Dr. Robert Malone, Dr. Ryan Cole, Pierre Corey, and others. And I was taken to task, not just for the comments that I've made in public uh, arenas uh, about uh, the safety and efficacy of the COVID shots or the lack thereof. Um, you know, I'm not allowed to express my opinion about that uh, based on the facts that we know. But then I was taken uh, to task and, and held accountable for the comments that uh, other doctors made in our summits. And um, I thought that was rather interesting. And then, of course, I was called unprofessional because I had the audacity to compare the American medical industrial complex and our current system of medical education uh, to what took place in Nazi Germany. Um, as you all have seen, the, uh, you know, the analogy, I believe it's legitimate. I said the lockstep mentality uh, in the medical profession is exactly what took place then. And it's such so part of the socialist playbook to destroy individualism, uh, just destroy this individual, uh, uh, this free uh, open expression of ideas. And um, so, yeah, they called me unprofessional more than once in letters to me, the American Board of Family Medicine. And uh, they did strip me of my board certification uh, for three months this year. 
Um, and when they reinstated my board certification, which again, this, you, you guys know this, but most folks don't, you know, it's not my license to practice medicine. That has been threatened as well, but that's a separate story. Uh, it's my ability to take care of my patients in the hospitals, which I was at this morning, uh, or to teach medical students, which I've done today. Uh, both, both medical schools and hospitals require you to re maintain your specialty boards. And, um, but then when they reinstated it, they did, it was a veiled threat that if I continue to engage in this misinformation campaign that I could lose it at any point in time. So we'll see what happens uh, after next week's meeting. Yes, yes, we will. That I, I still, I, I, I guess the thing that just blows my mind is you, you, you think of what's happened. I think the American Board of Family Medicine has been a little, little more hands off. But you see what the American Board of, uh, uh, P, or the Amer American Pediatric Association has done in the last, you know, two or three weeks. They gave Fauci an award for being a hero of the pandemic. They've come out uh, literally endorsing the mutilization. Mutil mutilation of children with, you know, they talk about, you know, ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine, drugs with a massive, long, um, you know, use record. record, safety record, everything. Doctors using them off label to try to help people in COVID. That's bad. But if we give cross sex hormones to a 12 year old and and mutilate them with surgery, somehow that's OK. Like it literally, how is, like you said, how is that not Nazi Germany? Look at what they did to, you know, people that were, you know, mentally retarded or homosexuals or, I mean, that's where the death, people forget. Oh, that's where the death. Experimented on everybody. Yeah, that's Very where the well. death camp started. The uh, the irony of the whole thing is that I was actually eventually kicked off of a medical executive committee at one hospital, uh, but only after the chief executive officer during a conversation with me and three other doctors, which my wife was privy to, this is during the days of no in-person meetings. And the conversation basically, in the conversation, the CEO said, Dr. Littell, we expect our doctors to be lockstep with us when it comes to hospital policy. Yeah, this is before all this unprofessionalism comment. So I'm, this this is, you know, the fact that he said that is not surprised, it did surprise me, but it's obviously where they're going throughout all of healthcare. And yeah, we're going to have to educate uh, our our the healthcare consumers, the patients out there about the the evil that is taking place within our professional academies, such as pediatrics, family medicine, internal medicine, and, and it is nothing short of evil. Um, and that's that's probably you know right up there with what the CDC and the uh, NIH and the and the FDA have all been guilty of. So yeah, here we are, and that's why we're going to get together and kind of have one great gathering and kind of address not just that evil that's ongoing, but what we can do, how we can pick up the pieces. Because just as we see in the political landscape of America, I think in the medical landscape, the, the silent majority have, have totally been unable to get represented. They're unable to find their, get their voice heard in politics every bit as much as medicine and education. There, we are being uh, squelched and silenced by a tyrannical minority and a, and a very small minority, mind you, of people that really want to silence us. Because I, I wouldn't, you know, you're in medical practice, I'm in medical practice. We see what the community wants in their doctors, and they don't want doctors whose voices have been silenced and who are going against uh, or who are endorsing, as you said, the mutilation of children, experimental uh, in vaccination programs in pregnant women, which ACOG supports, endorses, and expects. I mean, the OBGYNs. No, my goodness. We have a lot about which to, to visit on uh, November 11. It just it makes me th think to the point that you said about, you know, the silent majority wants this. But just like politics anywhere, it seems that the minority rules the roost and seems to be the one that gets on the boards and becomes the directors of the policies. And we're all I don't know. How do we change that? I guess. What are, any thoughts on to what we do to other than obviously getting a board position and is well, there any way, gonna, other way around it? We're going to bring some really heroic medical students to this conference. I'm flying two in at our expense, uh, and and from one's coming from Arizona, and one from Louisiana. And I'm just and I would have brought more in if I, if frankly, if I could have because they, they it takes incredible courage to to step up in a public forum and explain what they have been through as medical students and even pre-meds. And before that, um, to to have have a voice that opposes this um, 
this culture of death that's taking place in, at multiple levels. We can get into all the ethical quandaries, but you know, transgenderism being one of them, the, the fact that before they do a pelvic exam on a, on a biological woman, they have to ask that person on the exam table, what gender are they? You know, I mean, this, this is what, where it has gone. <laughs> and it's, it's beyond sad, it's despicable, right? So, so what needs to change, quite honestly, and there are uh, plenty of forces moving in this direction, is we need to create a, a, a new culture within the medical profession and, and bring along a medical schools that, that are going to produce physicians uh, to really obey uh, the laws of nature, the laws of God, the Hippocratic Oath, as it was originally written. All right. So so th this is within the realm of possibility. I really believe that COVID, I know for a fact, COVID has brought together, you know, they, they talk about strange bedfellows. I mean, people are coming together from all walks of life, all religious persuasions, agnostics, um, I don't know, you, you name it, that, that we're all in coming to this meeting together because we all see and we all value freedom, freedom of choice, uh, you know, freedom to pursue the American dream without tyrannical agencies uh, telling us otherwise. And so that is why, uh, you know, this is the tip of the iceberg. And uh, this meeting is, is really more than just a continuing medical education meeting. Yeah, we're going to give six hours of credit to nurses and doctors, but it is, it is I, I see it as, as hopefully a tipping point in medical education and um, an opportunity for the patient's voice to be heard. Well, and that's, and that's it. You know, the most common question I, you know, just before we moved, um, may work for about six months or a year. And I worked for two years in a very small startup clinic, uh, town of 11,000 people in logging country in Oregon. Um, and we got tons of patients just because they wanted somebody that wasn't just towing the line. And, but the co most common question I got was, how do I know who to trust? And I looked at them, I said, I don't know. I mean, listen to my podcast, obviously. But yeah. other than that, I, I, I mean, how, yeah. how do you know who to trust? Well, and, it, it's, it's almost like we've lost the, the most precious thing, which is the doctor-patient relationship. Yes. The patient doesn't even know if they can trust their own physician anymore, which was what's like the most sacred ground between you and your patient in a room. Pearson Ravitz's story begins with Dr. Stephanie Pearson, a passionate OBGYN at the height of her career. But when a shoulder injury struck during a precipitous delivery, her dreams were shattered, leaving her unable to practice medicine. Determined to make a difference, Stephanie became an advocate for her peers, guiding them through the complex disability process. Alongside insurance expert Scott Ravitz, Stephanie founded Pearson Ravitz, a company determined to approach insurance differently. Together, they set their mission to educate and empower physicians to protect their most valuable asset, their income, and the most important people in their life, their family. Today, Pearson Ravitz serves the medical community in all 50 states. At Pearson Ravitz, they understand the unique concerns of physicians. Physician-founded and physician-focused, Pearson Ravitz builds human connections before they create quotes. Life can change in an instant. It's hard to imagine that a sudden illness or injury could leave you and your family in a devastating financial situation. But with a little planning and guidance, you can prepare for every possibility. Visit PearsonRavitz.com today to schedule your consultation with the Pearson Ravitz advisor. Well, so. and as I've said, I'm on this own, my own journey right now. The, the three biggest issues uh, that I've had to um, address in my professional career ethically um, ha have been the, the women's health issues, which I, I outlined in my book called The Hidden Truth, and it's on deception in women's health care, how we were trained that, you know, every, every woman after giving birth to even her first baby was, you know, what are you going to do to never have a baby again? You know, was, we got two babies, sterilize them. I mean, this mentality is endemic. It's part, it's part of the Planned Parenthood propaganda machine that is really behind and the eugenics machine that's behind everything that's happened throughout the globe. But so there's the woman's health piece. And then there's the pediatric vaccine piece, which I only I'm kind of a, a, literally a Johnny come lately on this one. I mean, I knew I would I, I've been doing sp spacing out the vaccines and I was never doing some of them. I wrote a book about the HPV vaccine being evil. So I knew about that. Um, and we can get into that later, but just not tonight, but another conversation. <laughs> For sure. 
And but but really, I mean, we I'm sitting in my office right now, and for the first time in 34 years of practice, I have no pediatric vaccines in my refrigerator. All right, I have decided that these all things, the, all of them, have been one large human experiment for 30 years on our children or longer. And and as I say to my patients, parents, I say every disease that we're exposed, giving you these jabs, these vaccines, you know, I can treat. You know, I can treat pertussis with erythromycin or azithromax. I mean, we you know that. So, or they're not an issue, such as polio. So we, we, or not an issue for a baby, such as hepatitis B. We can go on and on. And then the third issue, which we are going to address in the summit on, in, in, in the food, the assault on our food supply, there was an outright, uh, outright assault on um, the beef industry 30, 40 years ago, which led to the statin uh, propaganda, the propaganda, all right, that you can't eat red meat because you're going to get a heart attack. You can't have, you know, even eggs and chicken, you know, so, so I'm bringing back, I'm bringing the author of The Carnivore Diet, I'm bringing an animal science professor in from the University of Florida who's not woke, hard to find those. And then, um, and then I'm also going to talk about statins. And that's the latest thing. I mean, every day I'm taking, I mean, it's, I, mean I can't tell you how many people I've taken off of statins in the last month since I made this conscious decision to look at people and say, you know, I don't believe there is such a thing as bad cholesterol anymore. I think there's this good cholesterol and better cholesterol. And it is not the cholesterol that's clogging up their arteries. It's a b- bunch of other factors, including the inflammation, as you know, oxidation, and of course, high blood pressure, uh, diabetes, and family history, obesity, and sedentary lifestyle. It's not the cholesterol, which is the enemy. It became the enemy because it it was a uh, a, a convenient truth for the pharmaceutical industry because they could they could sell their products. So all of these things will be brought out, but not just by me. I get to moderate other people who. Who may disagree with me and disagree with each other, but that's the beauty of the summit. There's going to the be thing, a lot of dialogue. No, so, so the thing that absolutely blows my mind <clears throat> is I, I mean, I feel like we're, I feel like you're my spirit animal because May and I have walked this exact same road over. I mean, the statin thing for me started in 2010 when they when they released that uh, meta analysis that showed there was like no all cause mortality benefit, and I was like, then why are we treating all these people? Like we're treating people that you know were were not diabetics that never had had a uh, heart attack, like you know all this uh, primary prevention. It was just all nonsense, and I I started throwing statins way back then, but but we just recently have kind of gone down the 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 road the pediatric vaccines. Like I, I read turtles all the way down. We have uh, interviewed uh, Paul Thomas a couple of times, like what an amazing guy. Yeah. Um, I told him the story of how the only physician I had known other than him that actually had their license taken away was a guy that was sexually molesting nurses in a dialysis unit. Mm-hmm. And that took three years. Paul's license for questioning the vaccine schedule, which is all he was doing. Yeah, he, he wasn't he really was, changing. He, he wasn't was, going out there on the limb like like even I am now. And he was I have been using his vaccine schedule for my parents for a long time. You're right. And for him, I didn't know I didn't know he was de licensed. That's, that's four crazy. days. It, it right. took four days. He fought. Uh he got his license back. And then his attorney said there the the way uh Washington and Oregon's um medical boards are set up, you're not gonna even if even if a judge adjudicated that they have to give you your license back, they don't have to because they're a separate government entity mm-hmm. that has their own power. So the the legislature doesn't even have power necessarily over them in in an individual case like this. So he's a coach now. He's a health coach. He he pr- prescribes no medications. He said yeah. like he doesn't want to leave Portland, which I don't understand. <laughs> but <laughs> well, you know, I mean that's. That's the, the, the last couple hours of the summit are going to be dealing just with medical freedom and cases like like that, where people have been stripped or threatened with being stripped of licensure or certification or medical school admissions or getting kicked out of medical schools or residencies. And, and really, um, even if they, that hasn't happened, the amount of emotional energy, the financial expense, the, the damage to, them, to, to their psyche and their families in the process, this is what the other side is hoping will, you know, defeat us, that eventually we're going to run out of steam, run out of emotional energy, run out of money. I had to spend 50000 just being able to maintain my sports certification and, and, and you know, with legal fees. Um, no, it's, uh, and there's so much more we can talk about, but we need to come back to a, to a message of hope. We're obviously going to just delve into the COVID 
updates of which there are many and everybody who's anyone on COVID is going to be on the panels and giving talks and then other issues will be coming up throughout the day. But at the tail end of this conference, ultimately, we need to have hope for America. And if in the medical profession has got people have got to restore trust, we've got to restore trust in our in ourselves. And you and I both know both of you guys, there are good doctors out there. But, but and you've met them and you know, the ones who kept their mouths shut for, you know, they're employed, they're owned by the hospitals, they're independent, they're, they're exclusive contracts in the ER or whatever. Uh, I, I can tell you stories of doctors who've been moved out. I'm sure you know stories of doctors who've been moved out because of voicing their opinions on the vaccines while they've been working. Uh, so there's just too many stories to share, frankly. So we, how many good people have been silenced to the point, like Paul Thomas, where they just say, hey, that's it, I'm done with clinical medicine, you know, I'll just go out and just be on the uh, speaking circuit. And even in our own COVID group, several doctors have made that decision to get out. Uh, they didn't even, it was, it was made for them. You know, Pierre Corey and Paul Merrick were kicked out of hospitals. You know, we don't have them anymore. I can still go to the hospitals as long as I keep my board certification. They don't have the option. P Peter McCullough was an amazing clinician, hospital clinician, kicked out of hospitals. So, uh, you know, <laughs> This this is this is so illegal. We have a legal panel got to speak. Uh, Matt Staver from the Liberty Council, Bobby Cox, Rachel uh, Rodriguez, and Warner Mendenhall. We have a power-packed legal panel, and they're going to address why, in God's name, this happened in America, and what are we going to do? Because we should not any longer be on the defensive. We need to get on the offensive and say, you have kicked too many people out of medicine. You've threatened. You've you've called me unprofessional despite never doing anything of the sort. And, and, and it's, again, you know, we go on and on the list, and not to mention the mandates on the vaccines, how many of these medical students were given no choice. And then in a lot of the states, they were told in their medical schools, as the one I'm teaching now, oh, our bad, you really didn't have to get that vaccine because in the state of Tennessee, uh, it's, not really, it's not really a law that so we're protecting you. But they'd already said, if you don't get it within a week, we're going to kick you out of the program. So all the students lined up and got them, you know, without you know, any option, any alternative. So, you know, we have a lot of legal issues that will be addressed. And, um, but again, you, I keep coming back to hope. I mean, we got to have a hopeful message. We don't want to just be angry about this. Uh, we got to be hopeful. I love it. Can you share a little bit more on some of the um, other physicians speaking at the summit as well? Sure just thing. Off the top yeah. of your head. I got about five minutes. I can tell you real quick. You've got, um, so I've mentioned the, the COVID leaders, the thought leaders in COVID, you know, Corey, uh -huh. Marrick, uh, Urso, uh, Kat Lindley, uh, there's Dr. Lynn Finn, who's no, she's no lightweight at all out of Texas, um, Robert Malone and his wife, Jill Malone, because she is a part and parcel of everything he does. She's an amazing person, a PhD scientist who's been working on vaccines, you know, around the same time as Robert has. She understands this technology well. Um, then um, and by the way, they've come around on their way of thinking. Some people still think he's like a closet vaccine proponent. And that's really terrible. To <laughs> but, uh, you just have to know the man to know where, where he's not. And I'm so thrilled to have him with us. Um, and of course, I mentioned Ryan Cole. Uh, I, I probably left a few out on the COVID network for children's health. We've got an OBGYN who's kind of new to our group. Dr. Kimberly Biss coming out of St. Petersburg, who is um, was chief of staff in her hospital. She just basically saw the effects, the impact of the shots on pregnant women, and she's going to be sharing her own experience. And it's so great to get her with us because she didn't really know who to turn to with her information. So she's going to be featured in the in the attack on our children. We're starting with our unborn children first with her because, you know, miscarriage rates. And then we're going to get into um, we have Dr. Rennie Moon, Renata Moon, who was kicked off her faculty position at a Washington medical school teaching pediatrics, future future pediatricians and medical students. Um, we've got a pediatric psychiatrist, child psychiatrist, Dr. Mark McDonald, coming out from Southern California, who's written two amazing books on the emotional impact of this COVID uh, pandemic on our children. Um, and then on the food, when we talk about the assault on our food, I've mentioned the professors from UF, Sean Baker, the author of The Carnivore Diet. Um, we've got a regenerative farmer that's going to come uh, by the name of Emiliano, who, who I've met. He's just ah. an amazing guy. He, he teaches people how to grow farms on, in, you know, in penthouse apartments. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's kind of cool. So, and then um, some of the doctors will be joining us. 
uh, that are also very involved in the agriculture. Ryan Cole has his own farm. Uh, Brian Tyson, who has sort of a seat to table restaurant. Oh, he's going to be with us on the COVID part too, Brian Tyson. And then, so I, that's why we're doing, we're moving, a lot of moving parts. You mm-hmm. saw people be coming in and out. And then for medical freedom, um, I've got a, a dentist uh, from uh, Dr. Uh, you know, Jennifer. Oh my gosh, See, I'm blanking on the names from, from, from Canada. And um, Kat Lindley, of course, is coming from the Global Health um, Summit. And, um, and then the lawyers, the legal panel I mentioned, four lawyers. That's a lot of people right there. That is. A lot of hotel rooms, a lot of flights to cover. And uh, we're paying for all that so that they can all be with us. And thank God the, the sales have gone, you know, really well. We're up to almost 800 people right now. The, the facility holds 1,000, and we've got to get them sold by Tuesday. Okay, so, so for, for for I know your time's short, but for those that are interested that will be hearing that between then, can you let them know um, exactly how to get tickets, um, if they want to attend, and any other sort of special events? Yeah, because you, you don't have to be a doctor to go. That's the other yeah. side of this. That's going. critical, critical. Yeah, this is for the laity. We're going to learn as much from them as they learn from us. That's been my story the last several years yep. anyway, right? Right. And so, you know, I'm going to have Moms for America come. And, and, and talk about the, the frustrations of finding a pediatrician that actually listens to moms, you know, or a family doctor, you know, that story. So there's there's going to be a real opportunity for the lay people. Now, but that's right now we have about 100 healthcare professionals and, and about 700 others coming to this event. And they go to you go to prescribe truth dot com, prescribe truth dot com. And that will take people to my website for my practice. You hit summon information and then there's, you know, basically three types of tickets. Once for the day event, if you're not a healthcare professional and don't need credits, there's a, that includes lunch and all the coffee you can drink uh, and whatever. Uh, I made that conscious decision. It's always good to have decaf and caffeinated coffee around. So anyway, we've got that. It's in a beautiful venue at the World Equestrian Center here in Ocala. Most people are getting finding out about that. We were there for the first summit two years ago. All right. So prescribetruth.com you get tickets for the day event if you're inclined to come and spend dinner with us it's a smaller function uh bigger tickets a vip dinner that option is on there as well for the evening saturday evening but all this is on saturday november 11th veterans day and yes veterans will be honored so i look forward to it no we love it i I think i wore the right t-shirt which is one of my favorite bands megadeth and i think that's what we're trying to stop is the megadeth of the biopharmaceutical industrial complex which unfortunately mirrors the military industrial one yep that's and interestingly interestingly ironically as a cornell undergraduate student in the late 70s i actually learned about all this one of my first books which is behind me in medical sociology and i became a teaching assistant back way back when they'd be surprised (laughs) it was called the exploitation of illness in capitalist society by Dr. By Ivan Ilyich, who was from the Cuernavaca, from Cuernavaca, Mexico. But it was a fascinating read because at, even at that time, I was learning about how the medical industrial complex was geared up to exploit illness for profit. And, uh, and of course, it turns out it's not the capitalism that's the problem. It's the extreme opposite of that that's the problem if you look at it politically at this point. Not to say people don't capitalize as well and, and profit off of illness. Right. So you'll be hearing that theme a lot during the conference is that is how much people have profited hospitals, the vaccine manufacturers, and 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 then and how those of us who've taken and put our careers on the line, as you know, even you two have uh, have not. You know, there's been that accusation. Oh, they got in for the money. Well, golly, I think any one of us would much rather be practicing what we learn to practice, right? Our vocation. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. No. So th- I, we know that you got to go. We really appreciate your time. Uh, we cannot wait to meet meet you and the hopefully the whole crew in person on November 11th. We will be there. Um, now that we only live two hours away, we are absolutely thrilled about that. Like yes, to say the yes. least. There's, there's no excuse. I, I got down there for that board meeting, which I won't talk about now. And we left here. <laughs> I left here at like what time? Noon. And I got to Sarasota, that hospital at 2.15. And then I drove back that night. That was kind of a long uh, trip. But yeah. uh, that tells you a little bit of how fast I drive. But <laughs> Yeah. Either yeah, way, well. I look forward to seeing you up here. <laughs> Likewise, <laughs> absolutely. Thanks uh, again for taking the time, and we can't wait to meet you and be there. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, we're really, we're really, really excited. All right. God bless you both. Stay well. I'll see you in a little over a week. 
It's no secret that medicine is a bit um, uptight. That's why Tim and I created BS Free MD to mix things up a little and have fun in the process. Besides, we are having these exact same discussions all the time, so we thought we might as well invite everyone to the party. If you really like us, you can get plenty more and maybe see one of Tim's cool tattoos on our Instagram or Facebook pages at BS Free MD. See you next time. Well, we try to keep BS Free MD as raw and real as possible. We can't be held responsible for any medical decisions or discussions had as a result of what you've heard on the show. We know, bummer. But the truth is, we really do care about your questions. So feel free to reach out to us by email at doc at bsfreemd.com.